If you look at the specs list for this watch, the thing that's gonna jump out at you is the size at 44 millimeters. This is a large watch, but if you see the pictures of this watch first, I think the first thing that's gonna jump out is the beautiful dial design that they've done on it. It's a really bold, fresh, modern look that kind of draws a lot of inspiration, I think, from some aviation style pieces. And you combine that with the build quality and components that they put in here, and you've got the makings of a really great modern sports watch. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at the original from Thacker Morale, which will be launching on Kickstarter on March 24th. In order to facilitate this review, this watch was given to me for free by Thacker Morale. However, other than the watch itself, I did not receive any compensation at all for this review, nor did they have any input into the content of the review. Hey guys, this is Dave. Welcome back to Just The Watch, uh, your budget watch collecting channel. If you are interested in collecting watches but you don't have a lot of money, definitely invite you to subscribe to the channel so you can follow along as I take a look at affordable watches, talk about affordable watches, and I'd love to have that conversation with you as well. So subscribe, comment, and welcome to the channel. Today we're taking a look at a watch that is launching on Kickstarter. The watch that we're gonna be taking a look at today is one that I'm kind of excited to show to you guys because I don't think it's gonna be on that many other channels out there. I don't think there's that many of these prototypes floating around. And yet I think it is a really cool watch. It's one that I've shown off in a few other videos when I've done some strap changes and things. Um, so some of you guys have seen some sneak previews and every time I do, it seems to generate some comments. Um, a lot of people are interested in this. And again, I think that is largely because of the design of the watch, particularly the dial design. On top of the design, the specs of this watch is really solid. They're giving you a Swiss Salita SW220 movement, which is the day-date version of the Salita SW200, which is just a great movement to use. You're getting 100 meters of water resistance, full stainless steel case and bracelet, sapphire crystal, and actually pretty decent Swiss Superluminova on top of it as well. And there's one more really impressive thing about this watch, and that is the initial launch price that they're launching this on Kickstarter. It is going to be available for $400 Canadian, which if I'm calculating that right is about $320 in US dollars. Now that is gonna be the early bird price. It is gonna jump up to 450 Canadian, which is about $360 USD, but either way, that's a great deal for these specs and for uh, the watch that they put together. So the Canadian pricing also tells you something about this watch. This is a watch uh, micro brand based out of Canada. Thacker and Morale are the names of the two guys that are putting this together. And I got to say, this has been a really impressive first offering from them. There really was only one thing that I didn't particularly like about the watch, and that was the clasp that they used on it. And I'll get into that more in a minute. But fortunately, one thing that is cool about this watch is that it is an absolute strap monster. So I'll also be throwing on a couple of other straps uh, to take a look and see what, how it looks. Anyways, let's go ahead and take a closer look at the Thacker Morale Original. All right, so this is the appropriately named Original from Thacker Morale. This is their first debut offering launching on Kickstarter. This watch has a really beautiful dial design that I think is really appealing. It's one of the things that I first noticed about it when I started seeing pictures of it on Instagram when it was announced. I particularly like this kind of dark blue colorway with the red and white accents. Reminds me a little bit of the American flag, even though Thank Thacker Morelli is a Canadian-based brand. Interestingly enough, what I didn't notice right away from the pictures is that this is a very large watch. You're getting 44 millimeters across, about 51 millimeters lug to lug, 22 millimeter lug openings, and including a very nice large domed sapphire crystal, you got about 13 millimeters tall. And you notice in this shot that the crown is unsigned, but um, nicely finished with some good knurling that makes it very easy to grip. Now this watch is a pre-production prototype, but I do believe it represents pretty much exactly what you're going to get uh, should the Kickstarter be fully funded. However, as is often the case with Kickstarter campaigns, there could be some minor changes between now and the official uh, release. Now they, they have this build as a sports watch. You're getting 100 meters of water resistance, a very solid build, something that should have no problem uh, handling any sort of water sporting activity. But you don't see that many sports watches at this size, especially being released by micro brands. The trend seems to be going smaller. And that 51 millimeter lug width and the 44 millimeter width um, is probably gonna give a lot of people with smaller wrists a bit of a hesitation. However, for those guys out there who have medium to large size wrists, um, I think this is something that is very wearable. And maybe something that I think a lot of people have kind of been wanting to see more of. It's kind of always this tug of war of people complaining that watches are too big or too small. So it's good to see a variety of sizes being released. 
Now, the thing that sort of really interests me when I got this watch, and particularly when I started wearing it and looking at it, um, so even though they have this build as a sports watch and it definitely fulfills that category, the size of the watch and the dial layout and the handset all kind of remind me a lot of aviation pieces. Now, pilot style watches are traditionally large size. So a 44 millimeter pilot style watch is completely reasonable. They're meant to have uh, excellent legibility and this watch definitely fulfills that. Talking a little bit about the dial design, you're getting a kind of inner minute track. So the minute track is on this little ring on the inside. Uh, the hour hand extends right up to that ring, whereas the minute hand goes all the way to the applied markers that go around the outside. So kind of inverted from the typical style, but I think that really looks pretty cool. And with a uh, dial diameter of this size, they're able to put the day date complication on the inside of the ring so it doesn't interfere with the three o'clock marker at all. And that's a nice complication to have on a daily wear watch. The large 12 and 6, along with that red tip second hand, give the watch a lot of character. And yet the overall design is still really clean. Very attractive and immediately appealing. And I think for new micro brands, that's one of the hardest things to nail down, is to get a good, solid design. And I think everything really is just really well balanced and makes for a really nice looking watch. Finishing on the watch, you're getting all brushed finishing, but the brushing is nicely done. It's well finished. The bezel is kind of circular brushed, whereas you're getting linear brushing on the lugs and on the side of the case. And if you're going for a tool watch, sport watch kind of look, I think that all brushed finish is going to be your best option. You know, it's nice to see some polished accents on, on cases. I like to see that. So I kind of would have been cool to maybe see some polished edges somewhere. Um, but they do include polishing on the uh, bracelet. So that sort of gives you that character there. The bracelet is also really high quality. It's a five link bracelet, so you're getting brushed outer links, and then you get this little polished, really thin inner link. So the inner links are kind of three pieces here, with the middle ones being brushed and the outside being polished. And then you're also getting polished edges on the bracelet. So I think the bracelet, when you have it on the bracelet, kind of gives it that extra flash that you might be looking for uh, that that all brushed case doesn't necessarily give you out of the box. Now talking about the bracelet, one of the things that I'm not a huge fan of is just this style of clasp. Um, the clasp itself is very comfortable and very well engineered. It also looks incredibly beautiful. You get this really seamless design where you can't really see any clasp at all. So very elegant look, which is why this, this particular style of clasp is very appealing. A lot of people uh, like this. However, for me, the thing that I don't like about it is that there is no micro adjusts on the clasp. And then there's also no half links either. So I would have liked to have at least seen some half links on this bracelet to give you a little bit more customization on the size. For me, I'm kind of in between sizes. My wrist tends to change size and to swell and shrink a little bit depending on the temperature and the time of day. So sometimes I'll get a really nice snug fit and other times it'll be too tight. Whereas if I add a link, then it's probably gonna be too loose all the time, which is mostly what I, I'd wind up uh, doing on this watch. So if you don't mind wearing your bracelets a little bit on the loose side, you're not gonna have any problem with this, but if you do want a kind of a, a custom snug fit on the watch, that's gonna be difficult to get on this particular bracelet. And I feel like for a sports watch, if you're looking at something that you might be doing a lot of um, activity with, having a clasp that gives you a little bit more adjustability uh, would be a benefit. Now, another interesting thing about this is that they included quick release spring bars on here. So I'm seeing this feature more and more, but that does make strap changes very easily. And this watch really is a strap monster. They included a nice uh, silicone rubber strap uh, with this. I'm not sure what their Kickstarter offerings are gonna be, if this is gonna be one that will be offered with the watch or if this is just, just something that they sent in uh, to test. So I will show it on this strap in a minute. Um, I'll also show it on a couple of other straps too because again, I found a lot of straps that really look good on this and I love to change out straps. So for me, even without being able to get a perfect fit on the bracelet, having that quick release spring bars and just having the ability to swap out different straps kind of makes up for it. You know, I could wear this a little bit loose on the bracelet most of the time, and then if I was gonna do anything active, swap it over to a silicone rubber strap or an elastic strap or a NATO strap or something like that. It's still gonna look great, and yeah, you kind of mix and match. Again, this watch does feature 100 meters of water resistance. Um, however, it is a push-pull crown. Uh, that's still perfectly fine for the water resistance. A lot of times you will see a, a screw down crown, which you know is, is a little bit of a bonus feature. Another very striking feature of this watch is the sapphire crystal. You see this is a very large dial. So 44 millimeters across and it is almost all dial. And that is just a massive dome sapphire crystal going across the whole watch. And it really is a beautiful crystal. 
um, very clear and easy to see into, very nice doming. Uh, one thing that I have noticed is that it does pick up a lot of reflections, but rarely do those reflections tend to impact legibility much. In fact, I didn't really notice it on the wrist until I started trying to take pictures of it and noticing that you know, almost any angle uh, I was going to pick up some reflections there. So I don't know how much AR coating uh, there is in here, but in real life usage, um, yeah, I didn't find it much of a, a distraction. On the wrist, the watch is very comfortable. It has a ton of wrist presence at that size. That 44 millimeters is just uh, kind of a really dominating size, but I, you know, I really uh, enjoyed wearing it. It's been a while since I've worn a watch this large. I've started to gravitate more towards smaller ones, uh, but this one, you know, it, it's a watch with a lot of wrist presence, but it doesn't look uh, out of place on my seven and a half inch wrist. Again, I think that that uh, dial design that they've gone out, gone with. By taking cues from pilot's watches, I think you can get away with having a larger watch like this and it not looking out of place on the wrist. And I can just get away with that 51 millimeter lug to lug. So probably if you're around a seven inch wrist or larger, this is gonna wear just fine for you. If you are much smaller than that, you might start to have a little bit of overhang with those lugs. Yeah, but for me, it's, it's a large watch and it just goes right up to that boundary of being too large without going over it. So I think they balance that pretty well. All right, let's check out the Loom as well. I was kind of surprised at the Loom on this watch. Being that it's a 100 meter sport watch and not a dive watch, I wasn't expecting to be as good as it is. The hands in particular are really bright. Uh, the markers are, are very small, so you're getting very small Loom pips for almost all of the markers. Um, kind of longer batons at 12 and six, uh, which do definitely glow brighter than the rest of the little dots. Anyways, I did run this up against uh, a number of divers in my collection in a one hour loom challenge to see how it fared. And it did pretty well. Um, the hands came in second place, um, actually beating out the Seiko Samurai. And while the markers did fade out much quicker, they did hang on pretty well for as small as they were. So overall, pretty decent loom for a sports watch. This watch is gonna launch on Kickstarter in a couple weeks on March 24th. So I'll leave a link down below for those of you guys who are interested in checking this out. And I would definitely encourage you guys to do so. Not only have I enjoyed the watch itself, I've also had a good time getting to chat with uh, Bob Thacker of Thacker Morale, uh, going back and forth for a couple of months now as they've been preparing for this launch. And Bob's been asking a lot of great questions about the YouTube watch community and just questions about what people are interested in watches in general. So it's always great to see a brand really interested in getting to know uh, the community and what people's preferences are and trying to design a watch around that. One thing that Bob had consistently mentioned over and over again was that he was trying to put together a watch that he would be proud of, and that's why he put his own name on it. So Thacker Morale is the name of the two guys that are putting this watch together. And I think there's something cool about that. It does take a lot to put your own name onto a product. And there's a, a level of genuineness that I'm, I'm really drawn to there. You think of big fashion brands like Daniel Wellington and Filippo Loretti, where they kind of just chose their names to develop an image and sell a product that doesn't really have much of a connection to the product itself. I feel like Thacker and Morale have a little bit more invested in this product. And so it's exciting to see where they're gonna go with this. Anyways, that's gonna wrap up the review for today. Thank you guys for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.